I've had a few parishioners ask me in recent days as I was announcing this Mass, why Candlemas? Why haven't I heard this before? Uh, newer parishioners, perhaps, who are just used to the Feast of the Presentation, which is typically in Catholic parishes just wrapped into the daily Mass schedule. And so the short answer I will give, which will unfold over the next several minutes, is simply so that we can depart in peace. Like Simeon, as we bridge two seasons, as we leave the broader Christmas season and begin to prepare for the coming Lent. This is, by the way, a feast in terms of our procession that has some history to it, just a little bit of background. It was at the beginning of the 8th century when Pope Sergius inaugurated a candlelight procession on this day, and it was several years later that the blessing and distribution of candles was added to the celebration, just as we do tonight. So that's when this was first called Candlemas, uh, even though the liturgical occasion was that of the presentation of our Lord in the temple. But we're, of course, highlighting from that that Simeon's Canticle, which we know in our evening prayers in Nunc Dimittis, uh, it's, which is prayed daily, and we recount Simeon's words, uh, recalling Jesus as the light to lighten the Gentiles, and he is able to depart in peace. And so this whole idea of bridging two seasons is supported by the story, even as Simeon himself moves from his longing to fulfillment and then his ability to depart in peace. And so in, as a backdrop to this, uh, to what we just heard in our gospel reading, there's reference to the Old Testament requirements being fulfilled. And there's actually two requirements that are being fulfilled at once. There's the requirement that women go to the temple to be purified 40 days after giving birth. And Mary here accomplishes that ritual purification according to the law. And then there's the requirement that firstborn males are brought to the temple to be redeemed. Uh, redeemed from what? Uh, if you remember the, your Old Testament uh, uh, history uh, with the Exodus, uh, because before leaving Egypt, the firstborn males were spared death only by the blood of the lamb, so parents were required to sacrifice a lamb in place of their firstborn son. In this case, it was two turtle doves, which is a provision for those who could not afford a lamb. But then what do we see here? As, as the as is recounted by Luke, with a greater perspective of knowing what was to come, the cross, uh, he records this with full understanding that we receive. He is the Lamb. And so now the repetitive sacrifices for sin can stop, even according to Hebrews 10.10. We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And by a single offering, he has perfected once and for all those who are being sanctified. And so here we see the pattern of sin is broken. As the Blessed Virgin Mary received the sanctification ahead of time, yet she comes to fulfill that, that ritual requirement. Now this is something that is offered for all of us, that cleansing of sin by virtue of the sacrifice of our Lord. So somehow this was revealed to Simeon. It says in our passage, by the Holy Spirit. But then St. John of Damascus imagines that the ineffable brilliance shone on Simeon so powerfully, that brilliance of our incarnate Lord that was in his eyes in such a way that the coming events were made known to him. And so he says, no less blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed, even as we have been given the greater revelation of our Lord's work on the cross, completing what was revealed here. But notice that Simeon seeing this as he's longing for, to see this redemption He's not satisfied only by his 
own salvation, which is evident by the perfect sacrifice now offered. He is joyful for the redemption offered to the whole world. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles. Simeon was not a Gentile. And the glory of thy people Israel. So his joy, his glory, is that this salvation is going throughout all the world. And so now he's ready to die. He's ready to die not only because his own soul has provision, but he's able to depart in peace because that salvation is going to the whole world. And so here we see that we have similarities and differences with the scenario of Simeon. Yes, you and I, if we were called to give our lives in any way, and in this is sacristy, we're talking about martyrdom, and we're talking about how we have the symbols of St. Alban uh, of our guilds, the, 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 the ribbons. Uh, Father Tanji was asking about this, and it has all symbols of martyrdom. And he said, so you're, so you're ready all to be martyrs? And one of the servers said, quite seriously, well, yes, on one level, we really are. <laughs> and so because we're mindful of the truth that we celebrate tonight. Uh, one of our young servers, just without missing a beat, was able to say that. So yes, we're able to depart in peace, or if we encounter sickness, or whatever we have, we have that peace, so we're able to go. But yet there's a difference in the sense that we do not have quite the advanced age of Simeon. We have not been, uh, as tradition has it, even supernaturally kept uh, a long life in order to encounter this moment tonight. So we expect to have likely another day or so. <laughs> and so what, what is our response? And the response that I'm going to bring to you is similar, I think, that can be that of St. Paul as he was writing the Philippians. For on one level, he's able to depart like Simeon, for he says in verse 21 of chapter 1, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. <laughs> so he's, he's ready to go. And he said, if I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. But which shall I choose? I cannot tell. He says, to remain, he says, my desire is to depart and to be with Christ. Like Simeon, this is a fallen world. I just want, I want my rest. That's what he's saying. But that's not what he chooses. He says, to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Whose account? The people to whom he will serve. So Simeon's days to serve those Gentiles for, which he, for whom he joined were about over. But you and I yet have an opportunity to serve. So there's a double entendre here. We're ready to die to depart this life if we're so called. But we're also ready to die by laying down our lives so that this light that we've received can go to others. We are ready to die by living, by serving those who have not heard or need to know this truth more deeply. And so in light of this, I'd like to read a quote from you by one Ludolf of Saxony. Some of you may be familiar with him from the, it's, he's always mentioned in the biographies of St. Ignatius of Loyola because this is the, his book, The Life of Jesus Christ, he read uh, as, when he experienced his deeper conversion and, and purpose to give his life uh, for the gospel. And so Ludolf, in recounting this scene, says, if you wish to hold and embrace Jesus in your arms and be dismissed in peace, you can strive in every work to be led by the Spirit. Come to Jerusalem, pondering heavenly things. Enter the temple, imitating the example of those in whom Christ dwells, sighing and asking, only that you might dwell forever in the house of the Lord. And so, in this sense, we encounter this light like Simeon, but then we have a desire to know this light more deeply. And so we're able to have this bridge between this light revealed over this Christmas season through Epiphany to wanting to dwell in the temple above all, 
which is what the very season of pre-Lent in Lent cultivates in us. This world is not my home, we learn to say. I long for the one above. And so the light of the Christmas and Advent season shines into our Lent as we cultivate that willingness to die, to die for others, to bring that light into the world. And so Ludolf of Saxony continues. Then you will be worthy all the more as you long for the Lord's coming to take the word of God himself into your arms and be embraced by faith, hope, and charity. And yes, you will be dismissed, but you will not see eternal death, for you have seen the Lord. So this is the pattern that continues, not just tonight, but throughout our entire lives. As we come to this temple, as, as we come to worship the Lord, wherever he will meet us in our worship, and we see the light, and we're willing to give our lives to him anew. May this pattern continue with us until we rest in him forever.